स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to continue i am going to talk about two topics namely the uh, the continuation of our discussion on the conditions for separation of variables but most important we are going to introduce the famous noether's theorem which talks about the result uh, or the relation between finding variational symmetries to the existence of the conservation laws so uh, what we have is the following we are going to talk about we will wrap up our discussion on the conditions for uh, separable solutions separable solutions right so this is our continuation of our previous uh, lecture topic and but most of the time we are going to spend on the topic of variational symmetry variational symmetry variational symmetry leading to the famous results of noether's theorem okay so what have we got here so let me continue our discussion in the previous discussion in the previous lecture we had ended our discussion on finding the necessary and sufficient condition for two dimensional problem where the hamiltonian can be or where the hamilton jacobi equation can be variable separated now for n equal to n greater than equal to 3 uh, it can be readily shown that there are uh, there are separable uh, hamiltonian uh, sorry separable hamilton jacobi uh, equations which cannot be reduced to the lubil's form for that we have to look at another result given by stackel so for n greater than equal to 3 there exists a separable there exists a separable hamilton jacobi equation uh, not reducible redu not reducible uh, to the lubil's form not reducible to the lubil's form and for that scenario we have to look at another result by uh, stackel i call this my theorem number 18 the theorem by stackel okay so what it says is the following a necessary a necessary and sufficient condition a necessary and sufficient condition for uh, for one where one is uh, where one well let me just say uh, say this result and i'm going to see uh, just recall what is our expression one so the necessary and sufficient condition for one which is our uh, reduced hamilton jacobi equation so for one to be uh, well to be separable for one to be separable is there exists a non singular there exists a non singular matrix u which is also equal to ukj uh, where my ukj is uh, is a function of qk uk j is a function of qk uh, where j equal to 1 to n and and the column vector and the column vector w which is w1 to wn right transpose this is a column vector such that w is also a function of qk right and uh, such that so these elements are such that 
I have the following setup summation k from 1 to n c k c k of u k 1 is equal to 1 and let me call this relation 1 and summation k from 1 to n uh, c k of u k j is equal to 0 and this is for j equal to 2 to n. Let me call this expression by 2 and finally, summation from k from 1 to n of c k w k this is 0 well now this is v and this is the requirement I call this as 3. And finally, once these requirements are satisfied, uh, the Stackel's result also tells us that the separable solution. So, this is so let me call this entire block of requirement as A. And then, once these requirements are satisfied, the Stackel's result tells that there is a separable solution which is, a, which is the following. So, the separable solution is given by psi k which is equal to integral of square root uh, square root 2 times alpha 1 uh, uk 1 uh, plus so on until alpha n u k n minus w k minus w k right d q k. So, this times this minus so that is uh, and so this is my separable solution. Let me and finally, the third block of the result also says that the matrix S which is my u inverse. So, u is this this matrix that we have is also known as the Stackel matrix. Okay, this has special significance in this result the Stackel matrix. Okay. So, so before I end this, uh, this statement of this result, let me just briefly say what is 1. So, 1 is 1 is the Hamilton Jacobi equation in the uh, in the conservative for the conservative system. So, I so my expression 1 is uh, summation uh, k from 1 to n half of c k partial psi partial q k uh, square plus v is equal to alpha 1 right. So, this is my expression uh, note this. So, which means the Stackel the result by Stackel tells us that the necessary and sufficient condition for the system to be variable separable is that we are able to find this set of const set of functions u k j and this column vector w k is such that uh, 1, 2, 3 these three relations are satisfied that gives us u k is u and w and finally, once these these unknowns are, are found we can write our solution in the form of these unknowns as follows. So, let us quickly look at an example. So, the example I am going to continue our discussion by the same numbering that we started with from two lectures ago. So, this time my example number is 11 and we are going to reconsider our previous uh, case of the central force problem in this time now in 3D. So, reconsider the central force problem. This was first introduced in, in example number 10 right and this time in 3D right. So, this time which means our Hamiltonian is of this form h of q bar comma p bar. This is also equal to 1 by 2 m times p 1 square plus p 2 by q 1 square plus p 3 square by by q 1 square sin q 2 right plus v of q 1 where where my where in spherical coordinates where in spherical coordinates where in spherical coordinates q 1 is equal to r 
Yeah, this is just one example. So, if we were in spherical coordinates, my my uh, coordinate q1 would have represented the radial component r and my coordinate q2 would have represented the angular component theta and my q3 would have uh, represented the azimuthal component phi that is angle with respect to the z axis. Okay, so, then for this Hamiltonian, I can quickly write the Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, my Hamilton Jacobi equation is, is half half summation C k s partial psi partial q k whole square plus v of q 1 is equal to alpha 1 right and we have that k equal to from 1 to n this is we have replaced p i s by its respective uh, respective uh, uh, del psi del q k s. Okay. So, I am assuming separable solution. So, we have assumed we have assumed that psi is equal to psi 1 plus psi 2 plus psi 3. We have already assumed separable solutions and hence psi k s. Okay. So, then I also need to mention what are my C k s. So, my C 1 is 1 by m that is coming from here right this quantity 1 by m appearing here and my C 2 is 1 by m q 1 square and my C 3 is equal to 1 by m q 1 square times sin q 2 right. So, so, these are my following constants m q 1 square sin q 2 c 2 and c 1. Okay. So, now once we have all these constants, we are ready to set up our Stekel's equations, Stekel equations. So, the Stekel equation says, so the Stekel, the Stekel condition says, let us set up this matrix. So, c 1 u 1 1 right plus, so c i's are the capital c i's we have just mentioned. So, c 2 u 2 1 plus c 3 u 3 1 equal to 1 that is the first condition and for the rest they are all set equal to 0. So, c 1 u 1 2 plus c 2 u 2 2 plus c 3 u 3 3 this is equal to 0 and plus c 1 u 1 3 plus c 2 u 2 3 plus c 3 u 3 3 this is equal to 0. Okay, well, so we have to find the solution to this problem. Note that the Stekel's result says that we need to find a solution, right. So, there exists a non singular matrix, it does not say that we need to find a unique solution. So, we just need to find a solution or uh, just one solution, there could be multiple solution. So, check, check if I call this system as my a. So, check that uh, we can check that u 1 1 given by m u 2 1 is equal to u 3 1 is equal to 0 and u 1 2 given by 0 and u 2 2 is equal to minus 1 by sin q 2 and u 3 2 is equal to 1 and u 1 3 is equal to minus 1 by q 1 2 well q 1 square u 2 3 is equal to 1 and u 3 3 is equal to 0. From here, uh, students can check that these satisfy, these satisfy, satisfy condition A, right. Okay. So, what have we got here? So, now, uh, so these are my solutions. Also, also if we choose our w i such that w 1 is, well, w 1 is m times v, v is a function of q 1 and w 2 is equal to w 3 is equal to 0, then my second condition also holds, right. So, then, then this condition holds, then summation c k s w k s is equal to v. Okay. c k s w k s is equal to v. 
Okay, so then what have we got? So once we have found UIs and WIs, we can directly write down our separable solution. My psi one, my psi one from the Steckel's result a square integral square root two times as uh, two times uh, u uh, alpha one times u one one. So u one one is m, right? Plus alpha two times u two one. So alpha two times u well alpha 2 times u 2 1 alpha 2 times u 2 1 and u 3 1 is well I have uh, let us look at the Steckel's result I should have that alpha 1 times u k 1 alpha n times u k n so psi 1 will be u well so, so k corresponds to the solution we are seeking. So, k is equal to 1 in our first case. So, this is, so this will be alpha 1 times u 1 1 plus alpha 2 times u 1 2 plus alpha 3 times uh, u 1 3 and minus minus w 1 and this is now integrated with respect to uh, q 1, right. So, u 1 1 is m, u 1 2 is 0 and u 1 3 is minus 1 by q 1 square, right. And w 1, w 1 is, uh, w 1 is uh, m v of q 1, right, okay. So, that, that will tell us uh, psi 1. Similarly, my psi 2, my psi 2 is integral of uh, 2 minus 2 minus, well, square root of minus alpha 2 by sin q 2 plus alpha 3 of d q 2 and my psi 3 is equal to square root of uh, 2 minus alpha 2 by, by sin q 2 plus alpha 3. So, I have just replaced all my unknowns, all my quantities using my uh, well. So, that is my uh, well, we have psi 1, psi 2. This is a problem in uh, well 3D. So, this is psi 2. Well, psi 3 is something else. So, psi 3 is quite simple to figure out. So, this is minus alpha 2 by sin q 2 and plus alpha 3 and sin and c, uh, psi 3 can be directly integrated to see that this is 2 q 2 alpha 3. We can directly plug in the values of ui's and we can integrate those, uh, those expressions to get to this result. Okay. So, we, we end this, this example by showing, finally showing what is our Steckel matrix. Uh, finally, finally our Steckel matrix u is e s is equal to u inverse which is also equal to 1 by m, 1 by m q 1 square, 1 by m q 1 square sin square q 2 and this is 0, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1 by sin square q 2, right. We see that, we see that uh, this has special significance because it tells us the determinant of this matrix is going to tell us whether the solution we have found is complete or not. Remember, we have found a solution, not a unique solution, right. So, so, let me just end the discussion on this example by stating the following. Notice the Hamiltonian that we began with. Let me call this expression as B. So, saying that uh, what we did when we were doing, when we were solving this, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation corresponding to this Hamiltonian, we set the corresponding Pi's. Uh, p i's c i's equal to a constant, right. Setting p 1 equal to a constant leads to the so called conservation of energy. Setting p 2 is equal to a constant leads to the conservation of angular momentum and finally, setting this quantity equal to a constant will lead to the conservation of the angular momentum about the z axis, right. So, when we were solving, so, so which means the conservation laws 
see I am regularly uh, pointing out the importance of conservation laws because right now immediately after a few minutes I am going to talk all about conservation laws. So, the conservation laws associated with, with our Hamiltonian system B are conservation of energy, conservation of energy, conservation of angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum about, about the polar axis polar axis or the z axis right conservation laws ok. So, so we saw some of the conservation laws being satisfied when we were solving the hj equations using separation of variables ok. So finally, I am going to end the discussion of finding the solution via separation of variables with this final result by Levi Civita. So, what this result says on essentially it tells us a necessary and sufficient condition for a system whether the system is sep variable separable in the case of non orthogonal coordinates that is coordinates such that the Hamiltonian has the product term of the form q i dot q j dot. So, so Levi Civita theorem for non orthogonal non orthogonal coordinates right. Okay, so, it says a necessary, a necessary and sufficient condition, a necessary and sufficient condition for reduced, for reduced Hamilton Jacobi equation is that h of, well h of q bar comma p bar is equal to alpha 1 and so, this is my reduced Hamilton Jacobi equation and where my, my p k's are given to be del psi del del q k's where psi is the solution to this Hamilton Jacobi equation. Uh, so, a necessary and sufficient condition for this setup to be separable for this setup to be separable is that h h satisfies the following set of n into n minus 1 by 2 equations, equations of the form, equations of the form del h del p k del h del p j's del 2 h del q k del q j minus del h del p k del h del q j uh, del 2 h del q k del p j minus del h del q k del h del p j uh, del 2 h del p k del q j and plus plus del h del del q k del h del q j del 2 h del p k del p j this is equal to 0. Okay. So, where where my j uh, not equal to k r from 1 to n fine. So, this is equal so that is my necessary and sufficient condition nothing is said about the form of the variable separable solution the result only says that such a solution exists ok. So, we end our discussion in this setup.